What most people don't realize is every time Congress passes a farm bill, at least in the last 20 years or so, more of the money that is provided through the farm bill goes towards food assistance programs than it does to actual farming. And because you have so much money going to these food nutrition assistance efforts, programs like SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, that, that kind of funding that is meant to, to bridge the, the food resource gap for low-income families becomes very important, especially when you're looking at uh, the intent of the program being to help people get food they need, but also at the end have a net benefit coming back to the farmers as well. What we looked at, especially as uh, a lot of amendments were proposed for the 2018 Farm Bill that related to supporting and promoting healthy eating by SNAP recipients, we looked at what they are consuming, not just on a food level basis, but actually looking at macronutrients, protein grams, fat grams, carbohydrate grams of SNAP participating households and non-SNAP households to see if there was a big difference. So that if any of these amendments that were related to promoting or incentivizing health food consumption actually came to pass, we'd have a better idea of the, the amount of ground they would have to make up. This research we think is important to the general public because so much of the farm bill and, and, and so much of the tax dollar spending coming from the farm bill is tied to food assistance programs. It's very important for the public to understand where those dollars are going, how they're being used, is it impacting farmers in the way they hope it will, and is it meeting the food needs of those food resource challenged families as it was intended. What we're hoping is, is that policymakers and policy administrators will take a look at this research before they make decisions on what they want to do to change uh, SNAP households consumption patterns.